What up guys, Shredded Otaku here. So today, I just wanted to give a couple first thoughts and impressions on the new title for the Nintendo Switch, Splatoon 3. I feel like I'm a pretty good person to talk about this as someone that is a kind of unbiased and also just doesn't play really any multiplayer or live service games in general. So uh, if that interests you, go ahead and stick around guys. If you like videos like this, or if you're just you know, intrigued by the artful juxtaposition of a super buff guy wearing anime clothes talking about video games and figurines, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now um, and check out some other content that I do on the channel. Um, I, I do a lot more than just this and I plan on doing quite a bit more uh, going forward. But anyway guys, to get right into it, um, I guess to start, my experience with the Splatoon series is probably different than, than most fans. In the sense we're back in 2013, I didn't own a Wii U, and admittedly I even saw some of the Splatoon stuff in GameStop, uh, other stores, during that period of time as I was buying probably 3DS, Xbox 360 games, seeing some of the Amiibo figures, uh, things like that, and my honest reaction was kind of like, yeah, so this is what Nintendo's doing nowadays. Um, I don't think the art style in the first game uh, really gripped me so much. I I'm not sure what it was, maybe it was just where I was at in life. Um, but I feel like it was just, just a little bit uh, basic, you know? I, I, the concepts seemed cool. I've always really liked, uh, I'm, a, I'm an artist and I love graffiti, so I've always liked, uh, you know, anything that has kind of like a, like a neon splatter abstract art style. But the original Splatoon just didn't, I, I wasn't sold on it. And uh, I certainly wasn't gonna pick up a Wii U to play it. Now fast forward, 2017, uh, the Nintendo Switch is out. Huge install base right off the bat. Great console. Um, me personally, I was playing Xenoblade 2 and Zelda Breath of the Wild. So I, I really just don't think I felt like I had time to invest in a game like that. And again, the art style and everything just didn't didn't hook me. And I felt like, you know, um, if I were to pick that up, like I'd be kind of lost. I'm always, I'm the kind of person where like when it comes to multiplayer stuff, it's so unfamiliar to me. My experience with like multiplayer and social games is like way back from the 360 era, uh, playing like Modern Warfare 2 or like Halo 3. Um, after that, I feel like, honestly, um, I'll be honest, like the online communities and stuff just, I feel like got progressively more toxic and just kind of almost cringe. So I gravitated more towards like RPGs and stuff and I've kind of stuck there since, you know, single player adventure games are generally my go-to. Um, now, with all that said, leading up split to uh, Splatoon 3, I feel like, I don't know, now that, you know, fast forward all the way, 2023, uh, 2022, whew, man, uh, this whole COVID era thing is really doing something to my sense of time. But fast forward to 2022, and I've become a lot more experimental with my gaming. I'm, I'm always trying to figure out what other people like and see like, you know, maybe I'll try that. Uh, maybe I'll take another look at that genre. Cause after playing RPGs for so many years, like even that kind of starts to feel a little bit of burnout. Recently I've been playing Xenoblade 3 uh, incessantly. And while I love the game to death, like sometimes I'm just like, I just need a little bit of quick action, you know? Something I could pop in and out of and just have a little fun, put it down, you know? Um, so, Splatoon 3 is coming out, I decide I'm going all in. Now, right off the bat, the art style for this game, I feel like it's just, just really kind of evolved. Like it's become way more stylized. All the characters really just have their own flavor to them, if you will. Um, and outside of that, I'll be perfectly honest, I really wanted an excuse to pick up the OLED that they announced for the Splatoon 3 launch. Uh, I'm a huge sucker for aesthetics. Um, and when I saw that, I immediately was just like, I don't need it, but I want it. <laughs> and uh, the other thing is I'm a huge Amiibo collector. And when I realized they were starting to reprint all of the Amiibo that I slept on for the other series, because again, I wasn't familiar and had no affinity uh, with these characters. I was like, you know, I now I have a reason to pick all these up. And they're starting to come out. They're reprinting some of the ones from two. They announced some for three. Uh, I even have another one coming from Best Buy Tomorrow, uh, the green inkling dude from Splatoon 2. And I'm really hoping they reprint all of them so I can just buy them all. I just love these figures. Um, 
and yeah, so like all of those things combined, I was ready, I was in hype mode. I, uh, I love peripherals and silly figurines and aesthetic looking consoles and all those things for me, like really just kind of helped me, uh, sell, help sell me on the idea of Splatoon. As silly and ridiculous as that might be to you, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna give it a shot for sure. So I picked it up and I'm really glad I did, you know, uh, because it's, it's honestly exactly what I realized that I've always wanted from like either a live service or a multiplayer game. Now I've kind of had this conversation with a lot of people, um, mostly my girlfriend when she asks me like, you know, I, I, you know, it's surprising that you've never, you know, I've never seen you really get into a game like Call of Duty or you're so competitive and everything else. You know, I, I'm, it's, it's always, it always strikes people as odd when I tell them like, no, I, Battlefield, no, I haven't played it since, <laughs> I haven't played it since 2010, uh, you know. But I realize that the reason for that is that video games for me are almost like they they have to be an art form uh they have to be unique in that in the sense that they're they're a work of art on their own and also like a form of escapism i don't want to sit down turn on my xbox or my switch obviously we're talking about the switch here but i don't want to turn on any console you boot up my pc and play something that is like based in reality i don't want to think about war when i'm holding a video game controller i don't want to think about anything of that nature at all i want to escape from kind of the gloomy, you know, world that, anyway, that, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But I feel like nowadays it's more important than ever to have an escape uh, or have a form of escapism that's based in something like positive and colorful. And all of the things, all the different themes wrapped into Splatoon, to me at least, are amazing and just, just, uh, just fun. <laughs> I don't know a better way to say it. I guess the, what I really needed from a live service game, I realize now, is a bunch of weeb culture, graffiti, paint splatters, and crazy characters named like Gnarly Steve. Apparently that sells it for me. You know, um, I haven't played a too, I haven't played a whole lot of this game, admittedly. I've, uh, I really, after this last week, I don't know if you follow, how many of you guys are watching this to follow the channel. Uh, after this last week, I really went back to the gym and been training more than anything else. But the time I have spent with this game so far, the online battles, just the the energy there with the music and just the, the fluidity of movement. I feel like the fluidity of movement is almost akin to doing skateboarding tricks in something like Tony Hawk. I mean, you're literally spraying bullets on the ground, swimming through them, and, and just trying to cover this map. It's so chaotic, it's so hectic, and it's just that sense of adrenaline that really sells it for me. Like. It's like Mario Kart level madness where you don't even really necessarily have to know what's going on or when to have a good time. And I'm, I freaking love that, dude. It's, it's addicting. It is absolutely addicting. And it's the same feeling that I had back, again, on the 360 freaking, I don't want to count how many years ago now. But it's that same feeling of like, it's getting late and you're like, one more match, one more match. But to me, it's that and more. Because even back then, like I, I've just never been the type to really care about like customizing my sawed off shotgun or stuff like that. But you know, you show me a, and this is so, so funny, but you show me like a, a little squid character and tell me that I can give it like steezy, uh, headphones and some cool, like looking dual pistol squirt guns and, and put some graffiti stickers on a virtual locker. And that sells it for me. I don't know. I like stuff like that. I guess in retrospect, looking at this game objectively in terms of its art style, if you compare it to something like Mario or Zelda, you really realize that none of Nintendo's IPs are meant to be the most cool or cutting edge. They're meant to be stylized and artistic and inspiring. And I really do think that Splatoon just goes that extra mile in the sense where it's, it's so unlike anything I've ever seen, and I love that about it. Now, with that said, the online community, I feel like, is probably getting back to that strange culture that I've become unfamiliar with. The stuff that I've seen ranges from hilarious or really cool to just kind of weird. But, you know, that comes with this territory, and coming back into the online scene after so many years, it's, it's kind of refreshing, you know? Refreshing in the sense where it's definitely still pretty cringe, but I've been away from the online scene for long enough to find it hilarious once again. Now... Outside of all the gameplay stuff and my 
personal take on the Splatoon series as a whole, this game in particular shines like a gem in terms of its visuals on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, part of the reason for that is that uh, Nintendo actually recently has been reaching out to AMD to use one of their algorithm, algorithm softwares. Uh, it's called Super Resolution. It's a very generic name, almost like Golden Frieza or something. But it does just that. It, it bumps the resolution up uh, dynamically, and so it's able to keep a steady frame rate while looking artificially better, but still to your human eyes, better on your TV screen. Uh, a lot of games recently, I hate to say this, but Xenoblade Chronicles is one of them, really suffer from getting up to the resolution while maintaining any sort of steady frame rate. And that's just a problem that the Nintendo Switch is running into as the hardware ages, because developers are starting to push it more and more and try to get as much out of it, and it's kind of like a balancing act to get this like impressive game on a technical scale um, and keep it looking visually uh, impressive by any means. But this game does it. You know, they really went the extra mile. The best comparison that I would give to it would be like Mario Kart 8, which had no need for any kind of resolution boost uh, with outside software because it was just a Wii U port that didn't put a lot of strain, doesn't put a lot of strain on the hardware at all, so it's just kind of there. But um, if you, you know, mentally can imagine that crispness that you see on the screen there, I'm sure if you own a Switch, you probably own Mario Kart. Uh, and even just pulling it out of the dock when you play handheld, it's like almost like jaw-dropping how crisp and clean that, that game looks on there. Splatoon 3 is the same way, and I really haven't seen another game come close to that in a very long time, and that, that to me is incredible. So yeah, especially if you're playing on the OLED, um, all of the colors just pop right off the screen in the most mesmerizing way ever. I've honestly spent probably more time than I should just kind of swimming around in the colors and just looking at how great it looks. Um, so yeah, enough about the visuals, guys. Enough about my take on the series. This is obviously not a review. I have not put enough time into the game to review anything, but um, I guess the only other topic I'd like to touch on is if you're curious about the single player mode, um, it's it's surprisingly impressive as well. Uh, it kind of starts off feeling a lot like the first two games in the sense where it's just like an obstacle course or point A, point B, level one, level two, and you're like, okay, like I already know what I'm doing, like let's just go. But then it opens up, and I'm, I'm not going to give any spoilers of any kind. Uh, you know, I'm not going to, not even a screenshot. I don't want anyone, I know a lot of people are very curious and just haven't picked this game up yet. But it opens up and it's got a lot of in-depth features that you would you know, imagine in a, in a real single player campaign. Like there's a leveling system, um, there's like a real open map. There's a lot of really cool stuff to check out there, guys. So it's, I would say that full-fledged game, definitely worth the pickup. Even though it's technically Nintendo's new live service game, it's 100% a complete package going in. Um, there's a lot of people that were saying things like, oh, this could have been DLC for Splatoon 2. I honestly have no idea uh, how that's even logical. All right, I guess that's enough of me gushing. I do plan on doing like an actual formal review later on. Uh, I bought a second copy, this hard copy here. I personally downloaded uh, this game digitally so I can just kind of pop in and out whenever I want. But I bought this copy so that my girlfriend could play with me. We're gonna be playing it a ton tomorrow, just kind of binge it. And then maybe a couple weeks down the road, I'll actually have like a review that I could set up uh, I'm not sure that's kind of tentative, but um, let me know in the comments, guys, what you guys think about Splatoon, what you did and didn't pick up. If you plan on grabbing any of these uh, Splatoon Amiibos, if you're just excited about the fact that these little figurines seem to be making a comeback, um, <laughs> you know, uh, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, also, uh, go ahead and drop your Discord tag in the comments below. I would love to, like, start playing with other people and actually start building a community. Uh, I did build a bit uh, a Discord server, me and my girlfriend did, uh, and I posted in my last video, nobody reached out. And I won't be offended if nobody reaches out here, but it would be cool to kind of start an online community, guys. So if that interests you, again, just drop a Discord tag in the comments below. Also, guys, you know, just like every other YouTuber has to say, uh, go ahead, like, subscribe if, you're, if it's your first time here and uh, you enjoy content like this. Check out the other videos on the channel. There's some cool stuff. If you want to see an unboxing of the Splatoon Edition uh, Switch OLED, I did that last week. Easy to find. Uh, and yeah, guys, stay fresh. Thanks for watching. God? God is... Is that you?